A short while ago, we got an announcement that I think surprised most of us. Not in a bad way though, I think we're all pretty happy with it. I have to say, I almost wet my skin. It was a pretty good day when there was an announcement of Age of Empires 4, the game we had been waiting for for so long, everybody wants it. It was something that we knew probably wouldn't happen, but it did. So in today's video, I'm going to go through whether Age of Empires 4 is going to fail or whether it's going to succeed. Now, this is going to be a bit of an interesting video. I want to start a nice discussion in the comments about this. What do you think are the things that we could get in Age of Empires 4 that obviously will boost the game and make it that beautiful game we want? But what could be the worries and downfalls of Age of Empires 4? I'm going to be discussing them in this video and I would love to hear your feedback in the comments. So sit back, relax and enjoy tonight's video on Will Age of Empires 4 Fail? First, let's go into who's making it. Now, this is where the worrying starts a little bit. We all know being made by Relic Entertainment. Of course, Ensemble Studios was a company that made the original Age of Empires. That shut down a long time ago, but it's all a Microsoft thing. So people from that have come into Relic Entertainment and they've all come and done their stuff. And there'll be some guys from the original working on this game and vice versa. So what is Relic Entertainment and why should we be a little bit skeptical about it? Now, by all means, they are not a bad company. They have a great repertoire of games, such as the more modern Company of Heroes games and the Dawn of War games, but that's where I start to get a bit worried. They've made the later versions of these games that have sometimes not lived up to the originals. For example, Dawn of War 3 wasn't a horrendous game, but if you compare it to the original Dawn of War, there is a massive scale and a massive leap between the excruciatingly, insanely good gameplay and this whole revolutionary mechanics of a Warhammer 40k game from the original and then a mediocre strategy game from Dawn of War 3. Now this isn't all bad. These guys are experienced strategy gamers, they're experienced strategy developers, which means that this is going to have great advantages for making Age of Empires 4. But like I said with Dawn of War 3, they have a bit of a knack of making more mediocre RTS games than living up to everyone's expectations. Dawn of War 3 was a bit of a... <laughs> a massive disappointment. <laughs> I wanted it to be so good. Nonetheless, these guys are getting back together and coming up with Age of Empires 4 and hopefully, hopefully, they're going to live up to our expectations. But like many other games, it is a little bit too risky to hype things up too much. Age of Empires, like I mentioned before, is owned by Microsoft. It's not its own thing, it is a corporation that has all the power over Age of, Age of Empires. They basically tell you what to do, what they want in this game, but this can have its advantages and disadvantages. For example, they have so many more resources. These guys have all the money. Microsoft is one of the big guns. They can pour as much resources into it as possible. They pretty much have unlimited money here that they can put into Age of Empires. I'm not saying they will do that, but of course, that is the possibility. So the guys that are coming in, Relic Entertainment, coming in to make Age of Empires won't have budget or resources or members or any like that. Manpower is not going to be an issue with this game, which of course can have so much of an advantage we know games like star citizen they've taken so long to do everything but they're getting the resources they have so much money that they're putting into the game and that game is revolutionizing the gaming industry today but this can have some disadvantages of course it's owned by microsoft which means they have all the final decisions they kind of limit the creative power of any developers that work underneath them which, obviously, yeah, they are giving them resources, the publishing rights, and all that good stuff, but you kind of need creative power and control to make the game that you really want and to make a beautiful sounding, looking, feeling, and playing game. So, this can have many disadvantages and advantages. I guess we're just going to have to find out which one. 
What do you guys think? Will Microsoft owning these guys be more of an advantage with all their resources or more of a disadvantage putting in creative control? Now this takes me on to my next point about the companies and this is talking about Sega. Now we all know Sega are some big guys in these strategy games and they have had a lot of experience and they really are the king of strategy and there's not really any competition to Sega at the moment when it comes to strategy. They own Creative Assembly who makes the Total War games. They have all that experience and that can be pushed into Relic Entertainment into making Age of Empires 4 which could be absolutely amazing. And that can really push it from being a mediocre game to a great game if it's done well. But we do know Sega aren't the perfect company. They can be a little bit sketchy at some point. And I'm going to move on to that a little bit later. So, graphics wise, there's no doubt. This is going to be a massive improvement over any pretty much past Age of Empires game. All the past ones, they look so great for their time, but they haven't aged great. Yes, Age of Empires 2 HD Edition. I think is more of a timeless game since it just it has that feel and gameplay to it that no one really cares about the graphics. Age of Empires 3 looked beautiful when it came out but it is starting to age a little bit now in my opinion of course. Now what are we going to see from the graphics though? I feel like it's going to be very similar to something like Age of Empires Definitive Edition where we have these remastered textures, this 4K but because it's a completely new game they don't have a base to start on so they're going to be making everything from scratch. Which, yes, this could be amazing in the graphics department because they're making everything come from scratch. Every polygon, every little pixel will be made from scratch and they'll be able to go wild with their imagination and get these graphics up on point and make them look absolutely beautiful. What I'm most hoping for in this game is a longer story-driven campaign. This is what really puts the gameplay into a game these days. People want these story driven campaigns. Yes, we had a section where everyone was all about multiplayer. That whole Call of Duty section where it was multiplayer games, multiplayer games, multiplayer games, but now people are a little bit tired of it. They want to come back to a story driven campaign. Now, yes, of course, multiplayer will be a big part and modding and all that stuff hopefully will be in there to increase the longevity of the game. But talking about story driven campaigns, I don't think they're going to go for what we got in Age of Empires 2. If they do, I feel like that's a little bit lazy, where we have these different scenario based campaigns and not one long story driven campaign. Because a long story driven campaign is what players are really sorting after these days. They want to know a good story. And yes, strategy games aren't known for having these amazing stories, but maybe, maybe Relic Entertainment can change that. Maybe they can change people's views on strategy games and how they work in the single player aspect. Yeah, this includes in the population of the game. This is sort of going into the game mechanics. That will, of course, be improved endlessly. Maybe getting thousands of people and units on the screen at once. But, of course, that can have its downfalls. Maybe we're going to have a lot of issues with optimization. That can be an issue with strategy games. Optimization, we have seen in things like the early versions of Rome 2 Total War. There was a lot of optimization problems with that. Hopefully, we won't see that in Age of Empires 4. But you've got to keep that in the back of your mind as the more players and the more population on screen, the harder it will be to optimize it. So there can be setbacks to this, but hopefully Relic Entertainment can get past them. Now, what is my main point about why I think there's a possibility Age of Empires 4 might not live up to what we want? This is just modern gaming in general. Back in the day when the Age of Empires games came out, gaming was much more simple. You put a game in, you put the disc in, you launched it up, and you went away and you played. These days, microtransactions has been a massive point of gaming and especially multiplayer gaming and we know that Age of Empires is very much still going in its multiplayer field as well. Age of Empires 2 is going strong and hard with modding and multiplayer so that's always a nice thing but if they try and focus a lot on multiplayer in this game I'm very scared that microtransactions is going to become a big point in Age of Empires 4. It's becoming more and more prominent and often ruining games these days. Now, this doesn't, I have to admit, seem to be a massive issue in the RTS genre. Games such as Total War, they don't have these microtransactions. RTS games rarely have them, unless they're made by bloody Bungie or bloody Halo Wars or something like that. Once again, it is owned by Sega, and they are not a perfect company. They have been seen in the past few years to be a little bit on the money-hungry side, and I'm scared we're going to see something similar to Total War like overpriced DLC marketing strategies where they bring in DLCs that are just extra factions that should be in the base game and they market them for £15 or $20 each and it's just insanely overpriced for a DLC that doesn't need to be 
a DLC. So that could be something that we have to watch out for in the latest Age of Empires game. And I think we are probably going to have to keep our eyes and ears open. But what do you think about this game? Is this game going to be a massive success? We are all, of course, hoping for it. But being made by companies such as Relic and Sega that have had a good history in the past, but have had a few sketchy things here and there, and then especially in the same genre, the same strategy genre, you do have to be a little bit wary when it comes to it. I'd love to see some discussion in the comments, whether you think Age of Empires 4 is going to fail or whether you think it's going to be a great game or live up or whether you just think it's going to be a mediocre game. Me personally, I think we're getting pretty much to the stage where there aren't many brilliant games coming out in the near future or at all. Games are becoming more mediocre. They're catering and pandering more towards a mainstream audience and these unique strategy games such as Age of Empires have just been dumbed down so much in the past. Hence why companies of heroes, the later ones, didn't get quite as well critically acclaimed as the earlier ones did. But I'm hoping for the best for Age of Empires 4. I'm wishing the developers well and I can't wait to see more updates. And of course, every time we see more updates on this game and any of the Age of Empires games, for the fact, I'll be putting it on this channel. So if you want to stay up to date with the game, if you want to have more discussions, make sure you go into my Steam group. There'll be a link to it down below. We have a lot of discussions on there and I post an announcement every time I do a video. And of course, all my Discord stuff are in the description. You can come on my Discord. We can have a chat. We can play games. Maybe play some Age of Empires. Maybe play some Mountain Blade. Maybe even play something like, I don't know, bloody Transformer Rats. Is that a game? Pretty sure. No, Transformer. The Transformers. That was, that, that's a bad browser game. <sighs> Alexa, what is Transformers? There have been three main publishers of the comic book series bearing the name Transformers based on the toy lines of the same name. Well, it, it, I, it seemed to mistake Transformers for Transformers. Um, oh dear. Mm -hmm.